Blender for Noobs. Hello, this is Dan Nobles, and welcome to Blender for Noobs, and welcome back to the Omicron project, uh, designing the Omicron spaceship here. So, in this part of the video, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking care of some of these weird looking uh, artifacts here, these lines, and also we're going to start assigning some materials to the ship. So, things are starting to get exciting, or will be, hopefully. I'm going to do a file save as, to start off with, and I'm just going to go over here to this and change it to V7 for version, version 7, and here we go. All right, so let's look at these lines that we have on our ship. They're kind of ugly looking. You know, if we uh, do a render of that, then uh, that's going to show up pretty poorly. I mean, not show up poorly. It's actually going to show up pretty good, but it's going to look poorly. And uh, we don't want that. So how do you fix that? Well, there is a couple of ways you can do it. You can take this whole ship and you can add a subsurface to it. So if we go here, add modifier, uh, subdivision surface, we can do views, kick that up to two, you know, make it nice and smooth, go to T and smooth it out, oops, make sure it's selected, and smooth it out, and you have a nice, nice smooth ship, and then you can, um, you can go in here, tab in here, and you can add edge loops, control R, you know, add some edge loops in there, that one didn't work out very well, it came across here very well, but, um, that way, I'm gonna undo that. Uh, you can you can actually uh, redefine your edges that you want in there. But what you've done is you've created a ton of faces, and that's okay if that's what you're after. If you want this nice, smooth-looking ship, um, right now I have a little over four thousand faces with that modifier sitting there. Um, if I take it off then I only have half as much. So here's another way that you can uh, do this. If you're like me with a ship and you don't want this super smooth look, this nice sleek look, but you want something that's more like a hardware type ship, uh, that's one way to put it, I guess. Um, here's what I'm going to do. Let's uh, take this back to flat. Okay, this, so this is what it looks like, the way we had it. So, in order to, to do this, what I'm going to do is come back. So, I'm going to do the smooth shading. So, if you do that, uh, if we were to do a render right now, um, what the smooth shading does a lot of times is it creates some kind of weird artifacts. I mean, like I said, if you're going for a completely smooth look, you want to use a subdivision surface. It's the, your best bet. But... If you want a smooth ship, but with angles, like is what I want, um, this is how I'm going to do it. I'm going to go ahead and smooth it out, and let's choose T to get rid of that menu. And then I'm going to come over to my modifiers. I'm going to choose Add Modifier, and I'm going to choose, come down here and choose Edge Split Modifier. Now, once you do that, immediately you can see that some of the edges have become more defined. And you can look under the surface that you can see that I now have my surfaces, my main surface is smooth, but I still have these angles that I, I wanted. The back doesn't have all those, you know, those weird artifacts in it. It has uh, it's smooth, but it has, again, it has some of the angles that I want. So you can play around with this modifier by changing the split angle. By default, it's at 30 degrees. And for what I'm doing here, it looks like it's working out like I want it to. But, you know, if you bump it all the way up, you know, go all the way up to 60 or something, you can see that it's becoming, again, quite smooth. Or if you go all the way down, back down to zero, you'll see pretty much ending up with what you had before you uh, smooth shaded it. So keep this at 30. And I'm not going to do a render right now, but if you do a render... Then you'll see that you yes you have some of these uh, angles that you want to keep or at least I want to keep and but the rest of it is nice and smooth which which just works out pretty good and again we're we only running 2,000 faces here so uh, we're bypassing the you know bringing that all that uh, subdivision surface um, 
polygons, all that geometry in. So we're saving quite a bit there. Okay, so that's what I wanted to show you with that. That's a nice little trick that you can use to save geometry. I'm going to do a control S quick save. And actually I can do that with probably with my um, thrusters here as well. Just smooth shade those. See how weird those things look when you when you uh, do that. When you take, if we uh, did a render of this, it looked pretty crappy right now. Everything's smoothed out, which is great, but you lost all those nice angles that you had. So again, add modifier, edge split, 30 degree angle, and there we go. Looks a lot nicer. Okay. So next one I want to do is get into a little bit of adding materials. Um, materials are a lot, a lot of time I leave for, you know, one of the final steps. Uh, I'm not even finished, you know, we need to do, do modeling on the thrusters and there's a lot more modeling, uh, you know, detail modeling that we need to do. So I don't usually even go to materials. Sometimes I'll, I'll start adding materials here and there as I go along, but um, for creating something like this and going through a tutorial, I know, you know, at least when I was learning, it was nice to, you know, add some color or, you know, something that you can look at, something that you can render and see some result of what you're doing. And it just makes it a lot nicer to do that early on. So you can kind of get, I guess what I'm saying is you get some kind of instant gratification from it to know that, okay, yeah, I'm creating something that might look cool here eventually. So I'm going to start with the body of the ship and come over to materials. And let's see, I have my backdrop material, but I, other than that, I don't have any materials that I've added yet. So I'm going to go new, click in here, and I'm just going to call this white. In fact, I think I will call this white underscore glossy because the ship's going to be a little bit glossy. Um, I'm going to end up, well, what I plan on doing is end up putting a texture on this, but I'm going to start out with white. Um, that way, if you know it's ever rendered without the texture, it'll look fine with the uh, the white. You can turn that you know that brightness up if you want. So we have our white ship. Um, for right now, same thing with the thrusters. I'll select those, and if I'm using the same material, I just drop this down here and choose that material there. Now, because I plan on using textures on the uh, body of the ship, I'm not going to be able to get away with with, with uh, keeping that. In fact, yeah, let me go ahead and let's change that right now because that's kind of misleading for me to tell you just use that same texture or, or same material. Um, if you're going to have texture on one or a different, you know, different textures on a different one, you want to use a different material for it. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to do a plus, let's call, let's do a new, let's call this, um, I don't know, white for the thrusters. Okay, and then we can take this and just minus that out. Okay, so we now we have two different materials on here and we can add textures as needed separately for those two pieces, if that makes any sense. Now, this brace right here, uh, I think I mentioned that I'm going to put like cross brace in here, so I'm not even going to touch this right now because this is just like a stand-in piece for those cross braces. I'm not even going to use it, so no no need to messing with it. Um, up here, this piece, uh, not sure what I'm going to do with this yet, but uh, let's go ahead and do a new material. And I'm going to make this black underscore glossy. So it's going to be a little bit glossy and come down here and I'm going to again make it black. And if you want to, if you want to see it in the viewport as you're going along, you can come down here under settings and go to the viewport color, click on that, and you can change it to whatever you color you want. Or you can take this little dropper, what I usually do. It's very easy to take the dropper and just grab that. It gives a good representation of what you're doing. Um, this wheel thing here, I'm going to probably make that like a metal color. I may, who knows, I may even make it red, a red metal or something. But for right now, I'm going to leave it as is. And uh, 
in fact, this gloss, this black glossy, I need to go into the nose and fix that to be glossy. And we can do that at a later time. But let's, let's uh, first concentrate on this because this viewport window thing is going to be the thing that kind of catches our eye and kind of does the most, um, well, it's going to give us the kind of the biggest impact when we render. So let's go ahead and do that. And in order to do that, again, need to come over to materials. And I'm going to do a new material. Click in here, and I'm going to call this glass for my glass material. And drop down here. This will not be a diffuse. This will be glass. So click on that. And scroll up here, find glass. Grab glass. There's my glass material. A lot of times what I'll do to the glass material, I don't like it to be, you know, just clear glass. I like to add a little blue tint to it or something just to make it more interesting. So it looks something like that. And again, so you can represent it in the viewport if you want to. Uh, just come down here and grab the little dropper. And there we go. Okay, so now if we look at this, uh, let me do a control S save since I've done some work here. And do a shift Z to get our rendered view. You can see that this class doesn't look uh, very interesting at all. In fact, um, if, you if you use the standard glass, I mean, it's good for some things when you're actually dealing with pure glass or something like that. You could probably get it to work in certain cases. I found for uh, creating viewports and spaceships and things like that, that I like to modify the glass quite a bit. So I'm going to go over to my window here, choose the node editor, and by default, here's our, oops, let me go over to my uh, material editor here. By default, we have our glass and our output to the material, and that's all we have. So in order to make this look more interesting, uh, I'm going to do a shift A and go to shaders and I'm going to add a transparent material. Bring this up here, do a shift A, go to shaders and grab a mix shader and I'm going to throw it in like that. And I'm just going to plug these in like so. Okay, and right away you can see this as it is. And I'm just going to back the factor off. Quite a bit. Well, maybe something like that. So cool. We made a glass that we can see through a little bit better. But uh, still not quite what I'm looking for. So I'm going to do a Shift A. Create. Uh, go to Shader. And I'm going to grab a glossy material. Bring it up here and go to my mix shader, shift D to duplicate, just like we do in modeling. And so now we can throw this into the mix. It's gonna hook this to this mix shader here. Let's go ahead and put the transparent in there as well. And bring this down here. Select all these, shift select all of them. Move it over and plug that in like so. Now we are getting something kind of interesting. So you can see what the glossy has done. It's given it kind of a shine. We got the transparent so we can kind of see through it. We got the glossy so we're getting a kind of a glossy uh, shine on the on the glass so it actually looks like some kind of glass or viewport or even you know some kind of weird plexi glass of the future. And what we can do to sharpen this up a little bit is go to our glossy by default, it's like 0.2 roughness, which is, for a glossy, it's fairly rough. So I'm just going to do a 0 0.02, put that in there, and you can see how this is starting to shape up here. And then what you can do also is you can kind of, you know, mess around with your mix shader. Uh, that's more towards transparency and more towards glossy to see what you're getting there. And then also, let's see, we got glass up here in our mix here. So we can kind of move more towards one or the other to see what it's looking like. So you can kind of play around with these values to, to get the best look that, you know, you might be looking for. 
And I think in, for this case, I might also darken this up a little bit. Yeah, something like that, at least very quickly. I mean, I usually spend a little bit more time on it and get exactly what I want, but that gives you the basic, let me do this, control up arrow. This gives you the basic setup for uh, the glass as I make it for this. So um, if you're if it's something that you like, then maybe you can also use that for, for what you're doing. Um, so that's the setup for that. And let me do a shift Z, go back to solid view, control S, quick save. All right, so I'm gonna do a control up arrow, do an F12 render, and we'll see our result. All right, so there's our render. And you can see that things are looking a little bit more interesting now that we do our render as we go along. And like I said, I'll end up probably tweaking this, this glass a little bit more. Um, but you can kind of imagine, you know, when you, when you think about the interior being in here and all that, how interesting, uh, how much more interesting this is gonna look as we go along. So that's all for this part of the tutorial. In the next part, part eight, what I'm going to be doing is concentrating on these engine thrusters, whatever you want to call them. We are going to start getting more in-depth on modeling these and probably I think we'll get pretty heavy into the details on them as well, but we'll see where we where we go with them. So thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.